What's up guys, Lane Whitaker here from Grind City Media and I'm still on vacation but I still got to cook and it's lunchtime and I got some awesome yellowfin tuna so what better way to eat this than basically raw. We're gonna make tuna tataki. It's gonna be easy, it's gonna be simple, you can make it, it's gonna taste so great, you can do it. This is Cooking with Lang, let's do it. Today we are making tuna tataki. Let's start with the tuna. You gotta get the best tuna you can, the freshest you can. A lot of times it'll be labeled sushi grade. If it's not, talk to the fishmonger or whoever the guy is at the store selling you the fish. Ask them what's the freshest and what's the best. Tell them what you wanna make and ask them what they would recommend you buy. I got some gorgeous yellowfin tuna here, caught a day or so ago here. We're at the beach in Florida. Um, and all I'm gonna do is get this ready with some salt, some pepper, and some sesame seeds and make like a crust on both sides. It's gonna be sort of aggressively seasoned because we're not seasoning the inside. We're just gonna season this outside and make a little crust on it. And this is gonna help protect it in the pan. We only wanna cook it very quickly on either side. So I'm gonna season up both sides and then flip it. Same thing on the other side. Time to cook the tuna. And we got a pan on here, it's on hot. I've got a little bit of vegetable oil in there and I just really want to sear both sides. The great thing about tuna is it's going to turn color as it cooks, so it's like having a little thermometer in the meat. It's hard to overcook it, especially if you're trying to leave it rare right in the middle. But we're going to put these in, hopefully we get a little sear here as they go in. And that's it. I'm going to leave them in there for about a, two minutes per side maybe, you can see changing color on the way up. I want it to get, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch of white, and then we'll flip them both. Same thing on the other side and we're done. Okay, I've done about two minutes. You can see, got a little layer of cooked tuna on the bottom there, so I'm gonna flip them over now, as best I can using this thing I found at the beach. And now we leave them alone for another two minutes. We're good. Time's up. Let's get the tuna out of this pan before it gets cooked all the way through. You can see it's stiffer than it was because of the cooked layers. And then, it's a clean plate, by the way. Got a clean plate. Time to cut the tuna and this was so simple. You don't have to let it rest because you didn't cook it for 20 minutes. It cooked for three minutes. Uh, this is like a found object thing too because this is just what I could find at the beach place where we're staying. So I uh, don't have my usual stuff. But I'm gonna pull this over here and then I'm just gonna cut it into slices. Let me start right there. You see it's raw in the middle, that's what we want. So I'm gonna go like that, about, I don't know what's that, two centimeters thick maybe? And I'm gonna put them, this is gonna feed a bunch of people for lunch. So I'm gonna just start layering them on a plate like this. And I'm gonna work my way through all this tuna. I don't want them to be too big. Let's kind of cut that in half. Cause I want it to be kind of finger food almost. This is also my Zen time. Cause we're at the beach, the whole family's here. Everybody's hanging around. Nobody wants to cook. Oh, so this is my quiet time. I get to stand here and quietly, carefully, thoughtfully slice this beautiful tuna, and plate it over here. And then everyone's gonna come in and eat and be amazed at how delicious it is. And I'm gonna say, oh, so much work. I've been in here grinding away for the last hour and a half, two hours. They don't know how you feel something. All right, we're almost done cutting up all this tuna. The plate looks gorgeous. I'm just gonna cut these last couple slices and fit them in here. And then we're gonna kind of dress this tuna and add a little bit of flavor to it. Nothing too fancy, just simple but delicious. And let's get these last pieces on. This little end piece that's not so pretty, I think I better just take care of that one.
last thing, it's almost time to eat. We're just gonna dress this tuna and make this whole plate look really pretty. I've got here some radishes that I, I don't know, cut into batons, I guess you would call that. Some cilantro, some fresh ginger that I diced up. This is a green onion, that's the white part, that's the green part. Sesame oil, soy sauce, and a lemon for acid. You can use vinegar, you can use lime, whatever. I thought lemon would taste good with this. So, from a height, up high, so that it falls all over the place. And if it makes a little bit of a mess right now, that's okay. I'm just gonna drizzle this ginger and kinda try to coat everything a little bit. Then, let's do the radish. Same thing. I'm making a mess and I don't really care. I'm at the beach. There's sand in my shoes right now. <laughs> I don't know where these plates and these utensils came from, but we're just gonna make this work. Do a little more there. And then some cilantro. Same thing. And then last two things are the green onions. I like green onions. I don't think they're too strong. Some people think they're too strong. So, you know, it's up to you. If you wanted, you could use jalapenos also in this or chili. But I'm just gonna go with what I found in the fridge and what I could find in the store. Okay. So that's all that stuff now liquid stuff. I'm sure my producer is really nervous about the mess here, but this is life. This is real life. We're going to move on to the liquid stuff now. Got all that stuff on there now. We're going to go with a little bit of sesame oil. Kind of mirror the flavor of the really strong stuff. Mirror the flavor of the sesame seeds. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit on there. Same with some soy sauce. Which is the best stuff ever soy sauce, and then a lemon. Uh, you, you just want acid, you know, this is a rich meat, uh, and all this other stuff, salty and chewy and crunchy, different flavors, you need something to kind of break it all up. You don't want the seeds though, so squeeze it into your hand, catch the seeds in your hand, drizzle the lemon juice through your fingers, all over the fish. And I think that's probably good. That's a lot of juice out of that half of the lemon. Time to eat, and I'm just gonna keep this simple. I got a slice of bread. You can toast it if you want. I'm gonna tear it in half. And I'm gonna grab one of these guys off here. Just put it on the bread. And we're gonna have a special appearance today for my mom. She doesn't know this. She's here. Test it, see what you think. All right, my mom liked it, so it's my turn to eat it. Mm. Salty from the soy sauce, really. Crunch, the radish, oniony flavor, the sesame oil is there, the sesame seeds are there. The ginger gives it a little bit of heat, actually. It is so good. This is so good, and it was really quick. It looked like a million bucks. It looks like a lot of work. It's not, it's easy. I did it, you can do it. This is Cooking with Lang. Do it, you can make tuna tataki, let's go.